I'm David Fry, Director of Communications for the American Kennel Club. And I'm Mary Birch, Director of the Canine Good Citizen Program for the American Kennel Club. Welcome to the American Kennel Club's A Beginner's Guide to Dog Care and Training. By now, you've given it a lot of thought and decided the time is right for you to have a dog. It's not always an easy choice. There are about 150 breeds eligible for AKC registration. dog can be a wonderful experience, but it also involves many new responsibilities. The American Kennel Club will be there at each stage of your dog's life to help you throughout your journey. Now that you've brought your puppy home, we'll show you how to care for your new dog, how to teach some basic skills, and how you can become a responsible dog owner. We'll tell you about the many exciting AKC activities available to you and your new best friend. Proper care and training begins with you, because you have to train yourself to be a responsible dog owner. Even before you bring your puppy home, your house should be a safe, secure place for a dog. You want to make sure your home is dog-proofed by doing things such as covering any exposed wires that a curious puppy could chew, putting household chemicals and cleaning solutions away where your dog cannot reach them, and making sure garbage and trash cans are securely covered or kept behind closed doors. You'll need to make a visit to a pet supply store for the necessities that include a sleeping mat and food, spill-proof dishes, collars, leads, and a crate for your puppy. Don't forget toys. Toys not only provide intellectual stimulation for your dog, they'll keep him occupied and out of trouble. Chewing is a natural part of a dog's development. Provide plenty of safe chewing toys for your dog so he doesn't chew on your furniture or shoes. Another important step in getting a good start with your puppy is to visit the veterinarian you've chosen soon after bringing your dog home. When you're looking for a vet, it's important to find someone you can trust, someone that can answer your questions, because this is the person that's going to be taking care of him for the rest of the pet's life. You can find a veterinarian by asking your friends or local breeders about their experiences. It's entirely appropriate to make an appointment to visit a clinic before deciding to take your dog there. Does the clinic have up-to-date equipment and access to emergency services? During the initial visit with the veterinarian, you should be discussing vaccine schedules as well as regular exam checkups. And how they get along. It's important that you're comfortable with your veterinarian and that you can trust them, ask them questions, and that they actually enjoy your visits there and enjoy the animals. It's important to begin thinking about insurance costs. To help you cover your pet's medical care, the AKC has introduced pet health insurance through Pet Partners Incorporated. You can contact Pet Partners Incorporated to find out how you can obtain pet health insurance for your dog. Visit the AKC's website for more information. One of the items every dog should have is a crate. The reasons are simple. First, most dogs appreciate having their own space, somewhere quiet and safe. Second, a crate comes in handy when your dog needs to be home alone. It keeps her protected and out of trouble. And third, a crate is indispensable for housebreaking. No den animal wants to soil its home. Used properly, the crate is a humane and very effective training method. 
You can leave your puppy in her crate when you can't be around to provide supervision. As long as you provide adequate exercise, training, and playtime outside of the crate when you are at home. You might also want to invest in a folding gate or some kind of barrier to encourage your new dog to stay in only certain safe areas of the house. Choosing the right diet is another obvious part of ensuring your dog's good health. Most commercial puppy and adult dog foods are fine as long as they offer a well-balanced mix of nutrients. Stick with well-known brands or ask your vet for an opinion on a type of food. Now, how often should you feed your dog? For very young puppies, three times a day as usual. After four to six months, you can cut back to two larger meals each day. When your dog is mature, a year or older, one meal a day should be fine. But no matter how tempting, try not to give your dog table scraps because that can result in a dog who begs at the table and can contribute to a weight problem. Proper grooming is very important because it keeps your dog's coat healthy. And for many people, it's an opportunity to spend a few quiet moments with their dog. If you have a short-haired breed, all you need are a few minutes once or twice a week with a comb and a brush. For dogs with longer coats, more time is needed to keep the coat clean and free of mats. Before you bathe your dog, brush the coat out to remove loose hair and surface dirt. Professional groomers usually place a bit of cotton in each ear before they wet the coat. Use a shampoo especially developed for pets, or in a pinch, the mildest baby shampoo you can find. As you bathe, start at the head and work your way back along the body. Rinse the coat thoroughly, then wrap your dog in an absorbent towel to soak up the excess moisture. The sun, or a gentle stream of warm air, not hot, from a blow dryer will finish the job. Every dog owner should be a responsible dog owner. The American Kennel Club's Canine Good Citizen program has developed a responsible dog owner's pledge. This pledge describes what it means to be a responsible dog owner. Responsible dog owners assume the responsibility for their dog's health needs, safety, and quality of life, and they never let their dogs infringe on the rights of others. Responsible owners keep their dogs safe by using fences, not letting dogs run loose, and using a leash in public. Another way to keep your dog safe is to make sure she has some form of identification. The AKC's Companion Animal Recovery Program reunites lost pets with their owners by using microchip or tattoo numbers to identify lost pets. Microchipping is a painless procedure. You can ask your veterinarian about microchipping your dog. And as a responsible dog owner, you should make sure your dog does not disturb the neighbors by barking incessantly, does not run loose, and that you always clean up after your dog when in public places such as parks, hiking trails, or on the grounds of a pet-friendly hotel. We can't say it enough. If you've gotten a dog as a pet and family companion, and not for competition in the show ring, the most important thing you can do as a responsible dog owner is to have your dog spayed or neutered. The breeding of dogs should be left to knowledgeable, well-educated breeders. These breeders are well-versed in canine genetics and they have organized breeding programs that are designed to contribute to or improve an individual breed. Because the purpose of AKC confirmation events is to evaluate breeding stock, spayed or neutered dogs can't participate in confirmation. However, spayed or neutered dogs are welcome in AKC obedience, agility, tracking, and performance events. As a responsible dog owner, you should provide your dog with the basic education he or she needs to be a good companion. Every dog can be trained. It really doesn't matter how old or young, what breed, or how big or small your dog is. So when do you start training? Well, serious training shouldn't be attempted until your dog is six to eight months old. Young puppies, like young children, are easily distracted, and they have a hard time concentrating for serious learning. But there are a couple of simple steps you can take, even with a youngster. 
Puppy classes help you socialize your puppy and teach some basic skills, like getting used to a collar and lead. You should get your puppy a light, loose-fitting collar and a light lead at first. Another early lesson is an obvious one. You should teach your puppy to respond to his name. Good boy, Lance. Good girl, Whitney. Good girl, Whitney. Eddie's a good boy. Good boy. Again, praise your dog when he responds to his name, always reinforcing the connection between the correct response and the resulting praise. Socialization is a critical part of training from puppyhood onward. Make sure your puppy gets used to being around other people and other dogs. Taking your dog into the world for socialization results in a dog that is well adjusted, confident, and friendly. One of the best things you can do for your dog or puppy is to sign up for training classes. AKC affiliated dog clubs in your area may offer convenient and inexpensive classes. So check the website, look in your yellow pages, or contact the AKC's obedience department. When it's time to begin basic training, you'll need a collar, a leash, and if you choose to train with food, some training treats. There are several types of collars, including buckle collars, slip collars, and a number of special training collars. There are pros and cons to using each type of collar, and if you decide to take obedience lessons, your instructor will help you choose and fit a collar for your dog. It's always wise for you and your dog to start your training together in a class situation. You'll get a solid foundation and benefit from the knowledge and expertise of an experienced instructor. You can find out about the obedience classes in your area by contacting the AKC. Some trainers use gentle tugs on the leash to guide the dog. Others train using food to get the dog in position and as a reward. And when it comes time to choose an obedience instructor for you and your dog, you should observe a training class before signing up. Watch the methods the instructor is using and ask yourself if you'd be comfortable with those training methods. The basic commands your dog needs to know to be a good companion and that he will learn in basic training classes include sit, down, stay, heel, and to come when he's called. These skills are the basic education that every dog needs. One of the first things you should do when you begin training is to identify things your dog likes that can be used as rewards for work well done. Some dogs like food, others respond well to praise and petting, and others have a favorite toy. Training maximizes a dog's ability to be a good companion. We often find that behavior problems disappear once dogs begin training. Trained dogs are happy dogs. Once you get to formal obedience training, one of the first lessons in training is healing. Hawthorne, heal. Billy, heal. When you start teaching healing or any other new skill, keep sessions short. In the beginning, your sessions should only last about 10 minutes. You'll gradually lengthen each session and begin practicing healing around corners, around obstacles, and in circles until your dog is comfortable in staying with you on its own. In these beginning phases of training, your dog will also learn to sit and lay down on command. If you choose to teach the sit using food, you'll hold the food over the dog's nose and slowly move it back toward the top of the head. The dog will rock back into a sit, then you'll reward him with the food. It may take a while, but sooner or later your dog will get the idea that when you stop walking, he should sit. To teach your dog to lay down on command, start with her sitting by your side. You can tell the dog down and put it gently into the down position by lifting the front feet off the ground and easing the body down until the dog is in position. As soon as the dog is in the down position, praise him. Make sure your dog remains in this position for a few seconds, then release and try the command again. If you've chosen to teach the down using food, begin with the dog sitting. Move a piece of food from the dog's nose down toward the paws, then straight out in front of the dog. The dog will follow the food and will drop into position. As soon as the dog is in the down, reward him with the food. 
Another extremely important skill in your dog's basic education is coming when called. Party, come. Like the sit command, coming when called is taught from the heel. As you walk along, take a few steps backward. You can gently snap the lead and say your dog's name, followed by, come. When your dog comes, reward with praise or a treat. To teach coming when called using food, show the dog some food as you move backwards and say, come. As he comes into you, give him the food and praise him for coming. With either method, at first all you'll want is for him to come towards you. The finishing touch is to teach him to sit when he reaches you. If you practice a few minutes each day, keep the session short, and provide plenty of praise, before long, your dog will be combining all of the new skills he's learned. The American Kennel Club's Canine Good Citizen program is the two-part program that teaches responsible dog ownership to owners and basic training and good manners to dogs. The Canine Good Citizen program is non-competitive. Both purebred and mixed breed dogs are welcome to take the 10-step CGC test. All dogs that pass the Canine Good Citizen test receive a certificate from the American Kennel Club. Good training builds a rewarding, lasting relationship between you and your dog. And it opens up a whole new world of activities you can take part in together. The world of AKC activities that you and your dog can do together is exciting and rewarding. By participating in AKC activities, you'll become a part of a rich history. Founded in 1884, the AKC is a club made up of clubs. There are over 5,000 AKC affiliated clubs. As one of the oldest sporting dog organizations of any type, the AKC sanctions nearly 15,000 events annually and as the world's largest dog registry, registers nearly one million dogs per year. There are many benefits to registering your purebred dog with the AKC. You'll be able to participate in the AKC activities that interest you. You'll have the satisfaction that your dog is recorded within the history of his or her breed. And you'll have access to AKC materials and programs. As a benefit of registration, You'll have a sense of pride that results from being associated with programs and services that are designed to improve the health and welfare of the dogs we love. The AKC Canine Health Foundation works to improve the health of dogs. Its mission is to develop resources for basic and applied health programs with an emphasis on canine genetics to improve the quality of life for dogs and their owners. There are 500 genetic deficiencies in dogs and it's the work of the AKC Canine Health Foundation to begin the process of eliminating these genetic disorders. The AKC's Compliance Division has two major functions which include inspections and investigations and DNA testing. The Compliance Division conducts over 4,000 inspections each year of dog kennels, individual breeders, and pet stores. Field inspectors across the country conduct inspections and promote high standards. The DNA department establishes the genetic identity of dogs in order to maintain the integrity of the AKC stud book. Collecting DNA is a simple process that involves using a small bristle brush to swab the inside of a dog's cheek. Owners can obtain DNA samples with the AKC's DNA kit, and dogs receive a DNA certificate that shows the dog's DNA profile for parentage verification and genetic identity. AKC registered dogs can be shown in AKC confirmation shows by their owners, friends of owners, or by professional handlers. The AKC Handlers Program recognizes handlers who meet the AKC's criteria and provides a source of guidance to consumers and information on issues pertaining to the handling of dogs. At the AKC, we recognize that young people are the future of the sport. Junior showmanship teaches handling and encourages good sportsmanship. There are seminars for juniors at which juniors receive training by AKC staff and judges, professional handlers, and other canine experts. Each year, the AKC awards college scholarships to juniors who have shown a commitment to the sport of dogs and outstanding academic achievement. 
To protect the interests of dogs and dog owners, AKC canine legislation deals with legislation discriminating against specific breeds, unreasonable breeding restrictions or extreme licensing fees, limits on pet ownership, access to public parks, and consumer protection laws for puppy buyers. AKC canine legislation develops materials and serves as a resource to dog fanciers who are addressing legislative concerns in their local areas. The goal of AKC Public Education is to teach about responsible dog ownership to members of the general public, dog owners, educators, and legislators. AKC Public Education provides support services to 3,000 public education coordinators around the country and 1,000 canine ambassadors visit schools and youth programs. You can take advantage of AKC printed materials, videos, products, and website demonstrations by contacting the AKC or by visiting an AKC informational booth at an AKC show. If you love dogs, you owe it to yourself to visit the AKC's library at least once. The AKC library is not a lending library. More than 17,000 volumes make up one of the most impressive dog book collections anywhere. The American Kennel Club Museum of the Dog is housed in St. Louis, Missouri. The museum holds one of the largest collections of dog-related fine art in the world. In today's world of computers, it's easy to find out reams of useful information in seconds. The AKC website puts just about every piece of useful, dog-related information at your fingertips. The website will teach you what you need to know about specific breeds, and you can get the latest updates on AKC programs around the country. The AKC website is one of the most popular dog-related addresses on the Internet. When you visit, you'll see why. If you have a question about dogs and can't find the answer on the AKC's website, the AKC Customer Relations Division is available to help you. AKC Customer Service takes orders for products and materials and handles 70,000 calls per month. If you're ready to get started in AKC events, you have many exciting activities from which you can choose. If you have an AKC registered dog, you may be interested in competing in any of the thousands of AKC dog shows held around the country each year. Confirmation shows are shows in which dogs can earn an AKC championship. Confirmation shows are not beauty contests. In the confirmation ring, licensed judges who are well educated in the breeds they are judging evaluate dogs according to a written breed standard. Judges evaluate four main areas. The physical structure of the dog, such as the bone structure, coat, and shape of head. The overall appearance and conditioning. Does the dog appear healthy and well-groomed? The gait or movement of the dog. Each breed has an ideal gait that relates to the purpose for which the dog was originally bred. And finally, the confirmation judge also looks at the behavior or temperament of the dog. Judges will notice a dog with excessive shyness. Dogs showing signs of aggression are excused from the ring. If you have a purebred dog, there are many types of competitions that AKC registered dogs or dogs with an AKC indefinite listing privilege can enter. Some purebred dogs, such as those who come from shelters or breed rescue groups, may not have AKC registration papers. The Indefinite Listing Privilege, or ILP, is a program that allows these dogs, along with AKC registered dogs, to participate in activities such as obedience trials, agility trials, tracking tests, herding, lure coursing, earth dog trials, hunt tests, and junior showmanship. The purpose of formal obedience is to demonstrate the usefulness of dogs as companions. In obedience trials, a dog's ability to perform a prescribed set of exercises is tested. Obedience is divided into three levels. The first level is novice obedience, in which the dog earns the CD, or companion dog, title. In novice work, some of the exercises are done on leash. Open obedience follows the novice class. In open obedience, the dog earns the CDX, or the companion dog excellent title. 
open dogs have progressed to working off lead. The utility class is the most advanced of the three basic obedience classes. In utility, dogs can earn the UD, or utility dog title. Dogs work off lead, and some of the exercises require that the handler direct the dog by using hand signals. Do you and your dog feel like being athletic? Agility is the competitive event where a dog demonstrates the ability to be steady and under good control, yet fast and agile while proceeding with the handler through an obstacle course. Performance events test the ability of many breeds to do what they were originally bred to do. Performance events include coonhound tests for purebred coonhounds, earth dog tests for dogs who go to ground such as terriers and dachshunds, field trials and hunt tests for pointing breeds, retrievers, spaniels, beagles, basset hounds, and dachshunds. Herding trials in which herding breeds herd ducks, cattle, goats, or sheep. And lure coursing, an exciting activity in which dogs follow an artificial lure around a course on an open field. The requirement for all these programs is a well-behaved, responsive animal and that can only come from thorough and sound training. There's another benefit of good training too. It enhances your relationship with your dog. A well-trained dog can do the most amazing things. The American Kennel Club is here to help you access a world of wonderful activities you can enjoy with your dog. You can learn more about caring for and training your dog by reading American Kennel Club Dog Care and Training published by Howell Bookhouse. Look for it at your local bookstore or contact the American Kennel Club at akc.org. The AKC also publishes other books and two magazines which are the AKC Gazette and the AKC Family Dog. The AKC also offers videos on various topics such as safety around dogs for children. So all of us at the American Kennel Club are here to help you enjoy your new dog. And we hope that you and your dog will take advantage of our many excellent programs, services, and events soon. If you have questions, check our website, and it won't be hard to find the answers you're looking for.